Why are comic book villains so dumb? The thumbnail, by the way, is Armless Tiger Man. Who is Armless Tiger Man and what does he want? Let's find out. Here comes the big wheel. Ah! You know, everybody memes on big wheel, but he would kill me. Like, not just the wheel, but also the pinchers, right? He's got some shit to, like, grab you and tear you apart. No, he wouldn't. Yes, he would. He would kill you. He would absolutely kill you. Coney loses the big wheel, but he says he could kill a giraffe. Yeah, big wheel is like a big monster made out of metal and steel, and it probably goes really fast. The giraffe is just, he's got a tail, he's got little ass legs. Marvel and DC have always had some sort of rivalry going on, whether it be who could have the best superhero team, who could rack up the biggest lawsuit, or what this video is concerned with, who could create the most bizarre, nightmarishly <laughs> stupid supervillain of all time. Is that time. a brick wall? 1941, Marvel creates Armless Tiger Man, an <laughs> amputee who joins the Nazis after his arms were chopped off in a workplace accident. Why would that be his inclination? Why would he go there? DC looks at this and goes, okay, how about Crazy Quilt, a <laughs> painter who uses bright colors to hypnotize his enemies. Oh, I like Marvel that, fires back with Gorilla Man, a hunter who tries to kill a gorilla, and when he does, it turns him into a gorilla. Is it the same gorilla? Is it a different gorilla every time? I kind of like Gorilla Man, actually. Fair play, says DC. How about Animal Vegetable Mineral Man? <laughs> oh my god! Alright, you laugh, but again, this guy would kill me. That guy would kill me quickly. It wouldn't even be close. Look at the He's got a tree arm, a dinosaur mouth, and a normal mouth. He could bite me with either one. But <laughs> Try playing 20 questions at this motherfucker. Nobody will get him. He's probably been in a video game. Let's take Asbestos Lady, for example, Ooh. an enemy of the original Human Torch. As her name might suggest, she built herself a suit lined head to toe with asbestos. Okay. Now, if you're not familiar with asbestos, it was basically this material used all around the world in floors, roofs, insulation, and the great thing about it was is that it was fireproof, making uh -huh. someone like Asbestos Lady the perfect opponent for a man whose whole thing is fire. Is that his head? Is that, like, flaming to... Damn, he's kind of... <laughs> I didn't even see that. I was looking at his head. I was like, wait a minute. Sheesh. In her first appearance, she tries to drown the human torch with an asbestos-lined fishing net, but her plan fails and she goes to prison. And that was it. Marvel huh? pretty much forgot about her for like half a century. Bro, it'd be really funny if an asbestos lady went to jail and then everybody that fought her just started dying like 50 years later. Like, what the fuck? It did? Mesothelioma, what happened? Wait. Now, she only appeared for less than a page is but in it? this page it is heavily implied that asbestos lady along with many other wacky supervillains at the time was created and illegally funded by the u.s government to combat the threat that superheroes posed to their own personal agendas and by now it was 2005 what? and so it was widespread knowledge that while asbestos is an efficient fireproof material uh -huh. it also causes cancer. Therefore, yeah. it was mentioned that at some point after the 1940s, Asbestos Lady had gotten cancer and died. That's really sad, actually. That's not funny at all. I don't know why you would devote your life to Asbestos, though. That feels like, like, damn, you, you, you could have picked anything. and You just rolled the dice and Ended up with Snake Eyes. But, believe it or not, this was not Marvel's only asbestos-themed supervillain. If it ain't broke, make another one. So along came Asbestos Man. Oh, not again. We didn't need another one. It was the same deal as before. Someone with an asbestos suit tries to kill the Human Torch, gets defeated in the same issue, and uh. is never mentioned again for the next 48 years. Yeah. But unlike Asbestos Lady, whose death only got a brief mention, <laughs> Asbestos Man was brought back to directly address the effects of asbestos. Okay. He now has to carry around an oxygen tank so that he doesn't die. Does he have an ironing board? Damn, they thought asbestos was really cool. Yeah, you couldn't give up that gimmick? That was just so hot you had to do it more than once? That's that's really weird to me. Why wouldn't you just... I feel like one asbestos guy is probably like, all right, I get it. But ironically enough, this helps him out. People are now actually scared of him. Not because of his evil plan, <laughs> but because they're scared of getting cancer. Yeah, As best I guess man so. tries to fight the Great Lakes Avengers, but ends up breaking down in the middle of the fight. He's embarrassed at how rubbish he is as a supervillain, and is scared that no one will remember him. Seeing as the Great Lakes Avengers are equally as lame. What the fuck is that? Is that read? Is that Mr. Fantastic? Flat man. I see. I thought it was Mr. Fantastic doing a bit. Wouldn't it be so funny if I just made myself really? That must suck. Actually, is that the Blob? Isn't the Blob one of those? Like a villain? They make him a deal. 
They promise to remember him and spread the word about how great of a villain he was Aww. so long as he surrenders himself. And so, Asbestos Man turns himself in and passes away shortly after. Aww. Around the same time as Asbestos Lady, DC were also churning out their fair share of stupid villains. Yeah, you had on. The Fiddler, Kite Man, Polka Dot Man, and one of my favorites, Angle Man. I kind of liked Polka Dot Man. I've seen that movie. The Fiddler is... What does he do, I wonder? Is he just the devil? <laughs> There's like a song about the devil and fiddling, right? And who is he fighting? Who is that? Kite Man actually does sound pretty scary, though. I actually I actually think Kite Man could be scary because he's just a normal guy that can fly, but like he could like do an airstrike on you, right? Or he could like shoot you from the sky. If there is a guy who could really control a kite well, it could like, I don't know, like a hang glider, but he's really good at it and he could move it up and down. He could probably shoot a lot of people. Kite Man is a terrorist. Yeah, 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 yeah. One fire arrow and he's good for it. Okay, so you have Arrow Guy. Arrow Guy is not very common. There's like one Arrow Guy on both sides. You gotta call him up. He might be busy. So you have Wonder Woman, this near Who's invincible angry? goddess, versus a normal man with a protractor. That's it. He just, what he would just, he do? He just, that looks like a dangerous weapon, though. And you know what? He almost wins. Like, <laughs> multiple times it seems like a weapon though like that shit's kind of sharp i don't know why we're making fun well that's not what this is well i guess sort of he had he had like the sharp one. Oh shit that's a lethal weapon the angle man would kill me that's a compass oh yeah <laughs> I forgot. You see, while Spider-Man was fighting Dr. Octopus and the Fantastic Four were fighting Dr. Doom, uh -huh. Daredevil had Stiltman, Leapfrog, and Paste Pot Pete. Who? Peter Petruski was a scientist who created this special kind of paste, and so he used it to create a paste gun and commit petty crimes. Like Perhaps glue? Like by paste we mean glue, right? Why? His real name is Pete, and he calls himself Paste Pot Pete. I feel like you're kind of giving it away a little bit, right? Like, you can't have your name in the in the villain name. Wait, isn't Doctor Doom's real name? Isn't his last name Doom? He probably changed that shit. Only for Spider-Man to break down laughing at his name. So much so that Spider-Man couldn't finish the fight because he just Stop found it laughing! So hilarious. And later on, when Pete tries to change his name, calling himself the Trapster, Spider-Man doesn't forget about it and makes fun of him anyway. Pete spent many, <laughs> many years as the Trapster, but more recently he changed his name back to Pastebot Pete. Oh, hell no, he got a little sleepy hat. He's about to go for a snooze. Why you got the purple and the green? I feel like that's a faux pas. If there is a villain, would you call the police or Spider-Man? Well, you don't call Spider-Man, you just yell. I would call the cops and then yell, Spider-Man, help! This was so he could use his ridiculous you, reputation to his advantage, as everyone would be too busy laughing at him to actually stop him committing crimes. It's a nice little ah. tale of self-acceptance and using your own the flaws Omega to your own benefit. Villain, yeah. DC, on the other hand, had the Clock King. Oh my god. If you look at this guy, maybe you're thinking, oh, someone who can slow down time. Okay. He, no, okay, so he doesn't have time powers. He, he makes you, he knows when you're gonna die. An impending doom thing. Like, he, he displays how much time you have left. He has precognition. Yeah, 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 I think he knows when you'll die. He has something to do with fate, or he knows when things will happen, right? Uh, no, he just likes clocks. <laughs> he will rob clock stores, businesses that have something to do with clocks in their name, banks, I guess banks have clocks in them. So he's neurodivergent, I think, is the... <laughs> Dude really just likes clocks. Hyper-obsessed, yeah, he just fucking... <laughs> he fucking loves clocks. Could have been really into trains, or... <laughs> it has to be clocks, huh? Monthly hyperfixation? Imagine an ASD superhero who has a new fixation every season, every three months. A new thing that he's really into. But when it comes to Clock King, there's more to it than meets the eye. <laughs> Clock King's real name is William Talkman, who commits crimes in order to pay for his terminally ill sister's tr Oh, what the fuck? He's Mr. Freeze. What the fuck? This is sad now. Wait, okay, if you had to rob a store to pay for your terminally ill family member, you could do better than a clock store. What about a bank? Or Fort Knox? But he likes clocks. When he himself is diagnosed with six months to live, oh my God. he dresses up in a clock costume, this being tragic symbolism for how he's running out of time. Oh my God. But when the green arrow stops him and he's stuck in jail, there's no one to help his sister, and so she dies alone. 
And to make things even worse, the doctor gave him the wrong diagnosis and he's actually fine. What? So this whole thing was for nothing. What? When he finally gets out of jail, he swears revenge on the Green Arrow. This is quite a sad story, but it wasn't the first time-related bad guy that DC had put oh out. Oh my god, Just dude! two years prior, DC came out with Calendar Man. He ah, this guy got a glow up though. Calendar Man could go crazy, actually. No, 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 no. Calendar Man, I don't know if it was the Vision from the Arkham games, but this guy could go, this guy could go a little nuts, right? Save the date. There's something about the impending... Uh, anxiety about like a big a date, a big day or a date coming up, and not knowing if he's gonna do something. Right? There's some like domestic terrorism angle where it's like, oh shit, you guys weren't around for 9/11, but every year after uh, 2001 and 9/11, everybody's like, uh -huh. and like for every holiday after, like it was like for uh, for Fourth of July. Oh my God, I thought it was over for a decade. It was fucked up. A formidable Batman villain whose crimes would always have something to do with a specific date or season. Like most of these villains, he didn't actually have any powers, and he'd always get beaten up and go to jail in the same issue. Oh, that was man. until the entire DC Universe was rebooted, and Calendar Man was reimagined as an insane, brutal criminal whose obsession with calendars drove him mad, and he was institutionalized at Arkham Asylum. Dude, I used to think that, like, Batman was, like, edgy, try-hard, cringy, whatever. But as I get older, Batman is super interesting. I'm way more into Batman than I used to be. I used to be like, eh, fucking edgy bullshit, you know what I mean? But like, he's both, depends on the writer. Well, that's what's cool, is like, he's like a blank canvas. I read, uh, I've read a, a bunch of like, I only read self-contained stuff, because I feel like the main comic is way too fucking long. But I read a Serious House on Serious Earth. I just read Long Halloween. I've been trying to read Year One. There's a lot of cool shit. What about Superman? I, I think Superman is like, I'm way more interested in Lex Luthor. I always say Luthor because that's what I heard in a comic, uh, in a cartoon once, I think. Luthor. Lex Luthor? I think Lex is really interesting. I actually have the comic. I don't know if it's here. Yeah, I have it. Hold on. I only have a couple of these because I'm not a fucking geek. Don't laugh. This is the only... Th I have this. Okay. <laughs> you see? And I have Killing Joke and Watchmen. And on the other side... Dude, Flintstones? goes crazy dude the flintstones uh comics or graphic dude they're good they're good good seriously the flintstones reboot is excellent yeah it's really good uh i have flintstones the max which is probably one of my favorites of all time and a bunch of crossed <laughs> which i would not recommend have you ever read manga shut the fuck up <laughs> i actually that I, I i thought about reading uh ito is that his name junji ito i don't know how junji i know i'm probably saying that wrong or Berserk. Berserk seems very interesting to me, but I don't know how to get started, so. Cody, it's not manga, it's a comic book. Also, Cody, the Flintstones graphic novel is so interesting. It is! They're just like us! They're from the Stone Age, but they have the same problems we do! There's a thing about religion! And if humans are meant to be monogamous and married, it's a good book! Is this comic, right? Yeah, this is the one. Marriage is like insurance. You only enter into a lifetime commitment because you're afraid of the future. But does being married mean she'll love me forever? Is just my attempt to keep her from finding somebody better. Is marriage really a sacred bond or just the illusion of security? Yeah, but that would do. But it was the 1970s Killed when lives. things were really Damn, taken Brett. to the next level. As it marks the creation of two of... Why does bro know about insurance? What do you mean? Spider-Man's <laughs> most iconic villains. The Big Wheel and The Wall. The big wheel I want to see what the wall is. I know about Big Wheel. What's was the deal with the wall? a corrupt businessman driven to the brink of suicide after being blackmailed. Instead of offing himself, however, he commissioned a giant armored <laughs> hamster wheel to get revenge on everyone who'd done him wrong. Honestly, W, whatever helps you. Get out of that pit of despair. Cool, man. That's quite a jump. This ended up with him accidentally rolling off a bridge, and he was thought to have drowned. But his story <laughs> doesn't end there. Oh. Turns out he survived the river and went to prison. And it was there he was entered into a reformation program for supervillains. Oh, cool. Having Good become a new man, he returned as the big wheel years later to help Spider-Man fight crime. Oh. He's not exactly the best at it, though, and fails to stop both Stiltman and the Shocker. The Shocker? Who's the Shocker? Is he different from Electro? See, that's the problem, is they got, like, six different... Like, when I saw Captain Cold in Injustice, I'm like, you got Captain Cold and Mr. Freeze? What the fuck? It was crazy to me that between Injustice 1 and Injustice 2, they were able to just, like, Deathstroke is now the... the who the Who's the other fucking guy? Deadshot. Deathstroke and Deadshot. Same fucking guy. 
Mr. Freeze and Captain Cold, you can just switch them out. There's so much of that. It's so annoying. Kona, you have to see the shocker clip. What the fuck is that? You can't escape me. I'll chase you to the ends of the earth. Is that Venom? <laughs> He's so mad. Let me see if I can find this clip. <gasps> I found it immediately. This is this used to be in a YouTube poop. <laughs> and me and my friends still reference it all the time. This is the... I don't even know. I think it's Electro. I love this shit. Looks like you're a born loser. I fucking love that clip. I love that so much. I love Electro just riding Looks out. Looks like you're a born <laughs> loser. The 90s, which were a very dark time for comic books. Sales figures were dwindling. Oh my god, what is that? But that didn't mean there weren't any I've never seen villains. Superman with a mullet. What the fuck is that? I don't think I have to explain this, but... Who is oh well. that? When Codpiece was in high school... He Codpiece? He was rejected by a girl who said he wasn't big enough. Oh my fucking god. Now, what she meant was that he wasn't tall enough. However, he misinterpreted this statement and got to work building this. As stupid as this may be, it's actually pretty efficient. It shoots bullets, it's got a drill for breaking into bank vaults, and it's also got a retractable boxing glove. Do you need boxing- do you need bullets and a boxing glove? Pick one or the other. The bullets are fine. Do you need to, like, knock somebody out and not kill them? Imagine getting dick punched. I would be so angry if I got mugged by this asshole. What is your problem, you insecure piece of shit? This is something you would make in your version of Pokemon. That's true, actually. If I made Pokemon, I would make a Codpiece guy. Codpiece does not hold a candle, however, to Dog Welder, who welds dead dogs onto people's faces, and when he runs out of dogs, he goes into an alleyway to kill some more. Oh my god! It's like they brought a bunch of, like, adolescents into a room and said, like, we're gonna make the most evil superhero ever. What should we do? How about a guy that catches dogs and then puts them onto people's faces? The dogs are dead, by the way. Kill this guy ASAP. If you see Dog Welder, take immediate action. He's the most evil, yeah. Like, come on, that's pretty fucking evil. <laughs> oh my These God. villains are just plain ridiculous. Gotcha! <laughs> you, guys, you guys get to see this, right? Kapow! But there are some villains that, while they may not look so ridiculous from the outside, they still have some really stupid motivations or evil plans. Take Sauron, for example. <laughs> not only did he just Everybody's steal seen his this name panel, from right? Lord of the Rings, Everybody's but his evil this. plan is to turn everyone- Wait, did he really get his- Oh my god, he really did. He got his name from Tolkien. I did not know that. But his evil plan is to turn everyone on Staten Island into dinosaurs by completely rewriting their DNA. However, as Spider-Man rightly points out, yeah. if he can rewrite DNA, he could easily cure cancer. To which Sauron famously responds, I don't want to cure cancer, <laughs> I want to turn people into dinosaurs. Honestly, I, I respect that writer so much. Whoever wrote that down and put it on the panel deserves a raise for their conviction. The level of conviction there is honestly admirable. To be like, you know what? I'm not. I could write this convoluted ass backstory where like he he got into dinosaurs as a kid and his teacher reprimanded him or something. Or, you know, fuck it. No, he just likes dinosaurs. That's it. Another daredevil villain called the Matador. Now say what you want about his costume or his tragic backstory as uh -huh. a bullfighter, but you can't deny the sheer genius of his plan to defeat Daredevil. To cover him with a big cloth <laughs> so that he can't see. Wop. It pleases me to humiliate you instead as a lesson to others. Ole! That guy rules. I love that guy. That's cool as shit. Imagine. Oh, my God. Souls game. Like like a Batman Arkham game, but it's more Soulsy, and you have to fight the Matador. He would piss me off so much. Have a grapple move that puts you under the cape. I haven't exactly answered the video's title. Why are these villains so dumb in the first place? Damn, we only have three minutes left, and he hasn't even touched it. One answer would be drugs. My theory, however, is slightly less extreme and also way more believable. What were Most comic smoking? books come out once a month, and so the writer will have one month to finish writing a script. That is, if they're only working on one comic. Back in the 60s, Stan Lee was working on Spider-Man, The Hulk, The Fantastic Four, The X-Men, uh, yeah. Thor, Iron Man, Avengers, Daredevil... You got too much shit. Just, uh, yeah. Man. Just go into the dictionary and pick out a noun. Air conditioning man. Yeah. Ah, fuck it, dog welder. He probably pulled out the dictionary. Dog. Uh, welder. 
Perfect. Often having too much time can be a setback, because <laughs> you'll be too busy Poor trying to perfect Man, something sick. and then nothing will get done. Meanwhile, Stan Lee over here has created 20 villains in the same week, and while a lot of them are pretty stupid, <laughs> there are some that ended up being really special. Honestly, honestly, I respect this grind. Just throw a bunch of shit at the wall and be like, yeah, this hurt, this works. Yeah, this, this can, this can, this has legs. I think this could stand for a little while. I, I think there's nobility in that. It's the Stephen King approach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if a car killed people? What if a dog killed people? What if a clown killed people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's your favorite Marvel Lords character? Mine is Carnage. I don't know if I have one. I don't think I, I have a favorite superhero. Genuinely. Oh, I fucking like Gambit. Wait a minute. No, I do like Gambit a lot. My problem is that there are so many of them. You know who I actually like a lot? Be only because of his design. And I get so much shit for saying this because apparently he's a piece of shit. I really like Cyclops. I think his design rules. I just like visor shit. That's the one wrong answer. Everybody tells me he sucks. I don't know. I think he's cool. For his design? Fuck yeah. I also really like... Is it Rogue or Rouge? I don't remember her. I think she's cool. I like her a lot. Slinking again? <laughs> if Cody was a villain, he'd be the Slink Man. The human Slinky! Goes downstairs eventually. 